So today's topic is 7.4 reciprocal functions. That's on pages 392 to 409 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of reciprocal functions of linear functions and quadratic functions. And our lesson objectives today, number one, to be able to graph the reciprocal of a given function. Number two, to be able to find the locations of any asymptotes on the graph of the reciprocal of a function. And number three, to be able to analyze the graph of a reciprocal function and compare it to the original function. So we know from previous math courses that the word reciprocal means to flip. And we, today we're going to be talking about finding the reciprocal of an entire function. For example, find the reciprocal of the function f of x equals x minus 4. Well, the reciprocal of that would be 1 over f of x. And if f of x equals x minus 4, then 1 over f of x means 1 over x minus 4. Now this seems pretty simple, but we're, what we're concerned with is what happens to the graph of the function when you take its reciprocal. So this is clearly a line, and so we're going to find out in a second what happens to the graph of a line when we take the reciprocal of it. So it says the graph of f of x equals x minus 4 is given to the right. Find the shape of its reciprocal. Also find the location of any asymptotes. Now this might be a new word for you, but we'll go over it in a second. Find the location of any invariant points and state its domain and range. So a lot of things we have to do. So here's x minus 4. We know it's a line with a slope of 1 because of the, the, the imaginary 1 in front of the x here. And it has a y-intercept of negative 4, which would be somewhere down here. But we're going to find the shape of its reciprocal. So reciprocal means to, to flip. And so when we're talking about f of x being equal to the y values, because that's what it is, f of x is equal to your y values. When we were finding 1 over f of x, that means we're just going to flip all the y values. So, for example, where we have a, a height of 2 right here at this point right here, that's a height of 2. On the new graph, if we were to flip it, it would become a height of a half, because that's a reciprocal of 2. Likewise, where it was a height of a half, when we flip it, it's going to have a height of 2 now. Same thing where it's a height of 3. If we flip it, it becomes a height of a third, so somewhere over here. And where it was a height of a third, say right about here, it, when we flip that, it's going to have a height of 3. Now, the invariant point will be a point that doesn't change when you flip it, and that's any point that has a height of 1. So right here, there's the invariant point. So I'll just circle that one in red. Now, we can just connect the dots. Now connecting the dots just means it looks like a curve here. But let's take a look at one second before we do that. At this point right here, a point that has a height of zero. Something that has a height of zero, if you take, if you flip it, you cannot find out what one divided by zero is. That is called undefined. And I think we've talked about that in class. So what that becomes is something called an asymptote. Now an asymptote is an imaginary line that a graph will never cross. And the reason it won't ever cross this graph is because there is no way that you can find out what 1 divided by 0 is, or 5 divided by 0, or anything divided by 0. And so this graph doesn't actually exist. The reciprocal of uh, x minus 4 doesn't exist at x equals 4. So there's the location of our vertical asymptote. So this line looks like it's going to be coming this way. It won't ever cross this imaginary line called an asymptote. And let's just talk about it for a second. It doesn't matter how big our y values get over here is that when we take the reciprocal of them, they're always going to be positive. But if you're going like well, a height of 10, you take the reciprocal of that, it becomes 1 over 10. You take a height of 20, 1 over 20. A height of 100, it's 1 over 100. So you'll never actually cross the x-axis because there's no way for it to change signs when you're just taking the reciprocal of it. So that's on the right-hand side of this asymptote. On the left-hand side, the exact same thing happens. You cannot take the reciprocal, or you can take the reciprocal of negative 1, sorry, but it just gives you negative 1. So there's another invariant point. So that one doesn't change. You don't ever have to circle these things. I'm just showing you that that one doesn't change. Um, where there was a height of negative 1 half, so right about here, now has a height of negative 2. So we just go about our business just flipping all these points. Where there was a height of negative 2, it's now a height of negative half where it was a height of uh, negative 3, that's going to be now negative 1 third. And where it was a height of positive th uh, negative 1 third, sorry, over here, it's going to be now at negative 3. So again, this graph, knowing that taking the reciprocal, something never changes its sign, it just flips it, it won't ever cross that x-axis. And this new function is the, the blue function, and that is the reciprocal of f of x. So 1 over f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 4, and that's what that graph looks like. So let's make sure that we've answered, answered all the questions. We found the shape of the reciprocal. We found the location of any asymptotes. So the location of this asymptote right here is at x equals 4. 
And there's another asymptote. There's a horizontal one that it doesn't cross, and that appears to be the x-axis. So the other asymptote is y equals 0. I should make this look more like a 4. Um, we need to find the location of any invariant points. Well, in this case, the invariant points are at 5, comma, uh, 1 and at 3, comma, negative 1. And we need to state its domain and range. Well, the domain for this function looks like it can be anything but where it doesn't exist, which is this asymptote, and that is at x equals 4. So the domain looks like it's going to be x is uh, less than or equal to 4 and x is greater than or equal to 4, but it cannot equal 4. And then you could say at the end x er. It means all the real numbers that are less than 4 and greater than 4 but not equal to 4. And the range then looks like this, this graph goes um, everywhere positive and everywhere negative, but it doesn't exist at 0. So the range, we would say the same thing, y is greater than or equal to 0 and y is less than or equal to 0. I really don't care what order these things go in. Some people might care more than I do, but as long as you get the right information down. And it's all the real numbers except um, 0, basically. So y is greater than 0 and less than 0. So our last example says, sketch the function y equals x squared plus x minus 6 and its reciprocal on the same graph. And then we're going to answer two questions. Number one, we're going to state the non-permissible values for x and the location of all asymptotes. And number two, we're going to uh, figure out the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts of the reciprocal function. So uh, when we, we've got our graph right here that we're going to use to graph, uh, we need to factor x squared plus x minus 6. And when we do that, we get x plus 3 and x minus 2. And the reason we're factoring it is because we need to know the x-intercepts. And because when we can find the x-intercepts, that means we can now find the uh, location of the asymptotes. Because the x-intercepts of the original function, you might want to write this down, the x-intercepts of the original function are the asymptotes of the um, reciprocal function. So our two x-intercepts are x equals 3 and x equals 2. That would be x equals negative 3. And so x equals negative 3 is right here and x equals 2 is right here. Now our y-intercept is pretty easy to find. Our y-intercept is negative 6 because we just let x equals 0. So here's our y-intercept. But we also need to find our vertex. And our vertex we know is right in between these two x-intercepts. There's some symmetry with parabolas. So we need to find the vertex. And halfway in between negative 3 and positive 2 is uh, x equals negative half. So if we plug that into our original function, we'll be able to find the y value for that thing. So it's negative a half squared plus negative a half minus 6. That's what our y value is going to equal. And so our y value is going to be a quarter minus a half minus 6. So if we write everything with a denominator of 4, we get this. We get a quarter minus two quarters minus 24 quarters. So negative 2 minus 24 is negative 26 plus 1 is negative 25 quarters. So what that really is is just uh, negative 6 and a quarter. So negative 6 and a quarter is our y value for our vertex. So it's somewhere right about there. So our blue function now oh, looks like that crudely drawn, of course. And so there's our parabola. Now we need to take the reciprocal of this thing. So this is a parabola, but the same rules apply. So what you want to do first, um, I would say what you want to do is, is find your asymptotes first. And your asymptotes are where the height is equal to zero. So we can just put in a vertical asymptote here. And that location of that is at x equals three. So there's answering our questions already. Non-permissible values of x. Now remember non-permissible values back in the day uh, which would be last year, um, would be anything that makes your the bottom of your function equal zero. So, or that was even last unit. Um, the bottom of this function equals zero when x equals negative three and x equals positive two. And this is the reciprocal of this. All right, so we've got a couple asymptotes here at x equals negative two and x equals three. And those are our non-permissible values. So x can't equal three or negative two. And now we need to graph the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of this thing, remember that anything that has a height of 1, when you take the reciprocal of it, remains at 1. So 1 is right about here. So that would be this point here. Um, if I would have drawn this symmetrically, it would be that point right about there. Um, anything with a height of negative 1 also doesn't flip. 
So a height of negative one is right here. So that would be this point here. And likewise, that point there. Anything with a height of two now becomes a half. So there was a height of two right here. And it would, should be a little bit over. Let's move this point right there. Um, so a height of two now becomes a half. A height of three or four becomes a quarter. Anything that had a height of um, a quarter now becomes four. So we're really high up here. Anything that had a height of a third now becomes three. So this part of the function looks like this. Shouldn't touch that asymptote, but it's hard to draw. Um, over here, same thing. Anything that has a height of a half is now a height of two. Anything that is, has a height of a third is now a height of three. And likewise, anything that had a height of three is now a third. Anything that had a height of two is now a half. And so we get this thing going on again. Again, shouldn't cross this line. Um, and then down at the bottom, we need to find the circle of this as well. So this was negative uh, 25 over 4. So when we flip that, that becomes negative 4 over 25. And that just means that it is close to 0, but not equal to 0. So up here. Again, a height of negative 2 means it's now at a height of a half, negative half. So there and there. Um, this point here, this negative 6 is now at negative 1 sixth. So this part of the function looks like this. Oop. That's terrible. So we draw it like so. So this red function is now our reciprocal function. And it's really badly drawn, so I apologize for that. But we have our asymptotes at 3 and negative 2. We take all our y values and we flip them, or just a few of them. We need to flip a few of them. We know that anything that has a height of 1 or negative 1 stays the same. Those are invariant points. And we have to remember that we have to do it to the bottom as well. Now. Part B says, what are the x-intercepts and y-intercepts of the reciprocal function? Well, there are no x-intercepts of the reciprocal function, even though I drew, drew it badly. But there are no x-intercepts because this acts as an asymptote, this y equals 0. So there are no x-intercepts. And the y-intercepts, well, since it had a y-intercept of negative 6, then when we flip that thing, that y-intercept is now at negative 1 sixth. So, Taking the reciprocal of a function, you need to know what it looks like originally. So you need to remember how to draw parabolas. You need to know how to draw lines. And then you just take all the y values and take the reciprocal of them, remembering that there's asymptotes where there were x-intercepts, and that anything with a height of 1 or negative 1 doesn't change. So in summary, the reciprocal of a function is when you take your regular function, f of x, and you flip it. So it now becomes 1 over f of x. And you need to know how to graph both a line and a parabola in order to be able to graph the reciprocal of a line in a parabola. To find the graph of the reciprocal of the function, you simply take each y value, just the y values, and you flip them. And remember that the x values do not change. So whatever had a y value, if it was um, x comma y, we know every point is x comma y. So if it was 3 comma 4, the reciprocal would then be 3 comma 1 quarter. Okay, so you don't ever change the x values. Um, any location of an x-intercept on the graph of f of x will become the location of a vertical asymptote that's really important on its reciprocal. And any point that has a height of 1 is what we call an invariant point. It doesn't change because the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So your assignment is on pages 403 to 409. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.